Okay, so it's uh, uh, my first time in Mexico, and so far so good. I was uh, scared by many people uh, who said that I would, wouldn't survive one day, and uh, the flight is perfect, and I plan to survive this day and the next day and further. So thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great experience, both uh, 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 my experience as a person or an, uh, as a mathematician, so thank you. Okay, so uh, let me start talking about Hamiltonian reduction. Uh, and yeah, so the longer title was uh, Coherent Sheaves on Derived Hamiltonian Reduction. So uh, let me start from just reminding uh, three incarnations of Hamiltonian Reduction. So, uh, uh, so we have X, which is an algebraic variety, smooth, uh, say over complex numbers. Uh, and there's G, uh, an algebraic group, uh, acting on X. Uh, then, uh, certainly G acts on cotangent bundle to X and uh, uh, Hamiltonian reduction corrects the fact that uh, even though you can take the quotient of G of X by G in good cases uh, it's unreasonable to take the quotient of cotangent bundle of X by G instead you do something else and here are the incarnations So, uh, so first of all, uh, uh, there's a canonically defined uh, map from T star X to uh, G dual, where G is the Lie algebra of the group G, and this map mu is G equivalent. So this is first incarnation. Second incarnation, uh, there's a map from the Lie algebra of G to uh, uh, just global vector fields on X. And for me, this will be, I, I mean, you can organize it as a map of vector bundles. G tensor OX to TX. Again, G equivalent map of vector bundles. And third incarnation is, I mean, all of them are equivalent. Third incarnation is a certain function, which for some reason I'll denote by W. It's a global function on the product of uh, uh, T star X and G. Uh, with values in, in C, and again this function is G invariant. And uh, the remark is, <coughs> oh, what a sound. Uh, <laughs> now we can meditate. Uh, so the remark is that uh, for those who know one of these definitions, it's, it's very easy to pass from language one to language two to language three. So just one is equivalent to two is equivalent to three. Uh, now, uh, to be short, each of these realizations of moment map produces a category. So categories related to uh, one, two, and three. And uh, the spoiler is that the categories will be also equivalent, and uh, uh, it's a, a 
uh, an earlier result of my uh, former graduate student, Tina Kanstrup, uh, who is now a postdoc in the States. Okay, so uh, first realization. So what we can do, we have a map. We can take pre-image of zero under this map. And, uh, well, informally speaking, we can take the quotient of this pre-image of zero by the action of the group. Uh, but since it's rather uh, involving procedure and sometimes the action is very bad, and uh, one of the crucial cases to study would be x equal to a point. So, uh, I mean, you, you wouldn't be uh, so easily taking a quotient of a point by, by a group. So, uh, so I, I'm considering quasi-coherent sheaves or whatever, vector bundles on this pre-image equivalent with respect to the group. I won't give the definition, but this is the first category. And uh, uh, the remark here is that uh, to understand this, there are three ways. So three appears. Uh, well, I, I take the derived category, but I, uh, well, it's, it's a brief talk, so I'm, I'm slightly sketchy. Yes, I'm taking the derived category. Uh, so there are three ways to understand mu inverse of zero, and actually, uh, it's uh, they, they are ordered in the uh, in the level of complicatedness. So uh, level one is uh, set theoretic. Uh, level two is scheme theoretic. And level three is uh, derived. Uh, and that's what we'll actually do. So this thing is a derived scheme. And uh, just a bit later, I'll, when, when I discuss two, I'll produce a very precise realization of this derived scheme. So, so yes, yeah, this is the first category to consider. Now, the second category is uh, like this. So given this two-term complex uh, of vector bundles, and this is the place minus 1, and this is the place 0, you can take its symmetric algebra, symmetric DG algebra over OX. Uh, well, and call it, say, AX. So, uh, remark, uh, if you look precisely how you calculate functions on this pre-image of zero, it will turn out that AX is, well, functions, exactly functions on this pre-image of zero. So, uh, the second category to consider is simply DG modules, well, sheaves of DG modules over this AX. And again, they should be G equivalent. So, uh, and uh, the third realization leads to the third category. So, so far, I, I just, I'm just mentioning uh, that uh, one Category number one is equivalent to category number two for, uh, for, for uh, I mean, tautological reasons. Because basically, this is the algebra of functions. So uh, now, uh, realization three. So given uh, uh, an algebraic variety Z, which in our case will be equal to T star X times g, and uh, a function w, uh, which usually in this story is called potential. One considers matrix factorizations. On z with potential w, so Uh, 
So what can I say about this? Just a couple of words. In the simplest form, a matrix factorization is a collection of two vector bundles, E0 and E1. Uh, it's Z2 graded. In my story, it will be Z graded, but uh, I don't go into complications. And two differentials, D and D. And uh, uh, so you can take D squared. And if you were, you were doing complexes, D squared would be equal to zero. But in matrix factorization story, D squared equals multiplication by the given function W. So uh, you cannot do homology because D squared is not zero, but you can still do homotopy uh, of such gadgets. And you can take homotopy category of matrix factorizations. And if W is G invariant in the presence of a, a G acting on Z, uh, Polish Chuk and Weintraub uh, defined uh, equivalent matrix factorization. So uh, now uh, let me just put on the blackboard uh, the uh, statement of the old theorem of uh, my student and me. Uh, so the three categories in question, so for uh, uh, the moment map situation, for three realizations, of mu uh, uh, three categories are three derived categories are equivalent so uh, some mysterious quasi coherent sheaves on derived pre image of zero are just realized as modules over this DG algebra and uh, uh, also are equivalent to properly defined derived category of G equivalent matrix factorizations. Okay, so uh, now let me switch a bit and explain. Uh, ah, there, there's one technical remark. So, technical remark. Uh, so, uh, shifted Hamiltonian reduction means that uh, actual algebra, actual DG algebra I'm interested in is uh, shifted by two to the right. So it's symmetric algebra of the same complex But this whole complex is shifted by minus two. So uh, same. So it, it turns out that this is the the right choice. Uh, now cases of interest. Uh, so first case is. Uh, very uh, simple and toy example to this whole story is when uh, some algebraic group G uh, acts on a point. So if you take a look at what, what happens here, then AX will be just exterior algebra. I mean, this is graded symmetric. Uh, exterior algebra of G shifted by minus one. And classical causal duality, actually, uh, is actually a toy example of, 
of our theorem with Tina, it basically says that, uh, well, DG modules, again, derived category of uh, lambda of G of minus one is equivalent to, well, derived category of quasi-coherent sheaves on simply Lie algebra G, uh, only they should be torsion at zero. So I didn't define precisely what I mean by matrix factorizations, my restrictions, but this is actually the category. Uh, and since there was a group present, so these are equivalent and these are also equivalent. So this is, this is like a toy example of what happened so far. So this is a realization number three. Uh, so, uh, and another case of interest is, uh, goes under the name of a fine Hecke category. Uh, so uh, here, I need some notation. So, so let's let's stick to the uh, to the most obvious case, na namely, my x will be just G L N, an algebraic group, and the group acting will be so G L N contains uh, contains Borel subgroup B, and G is left right translations by this Borel. So then, a fine Hecke category. Uh, up to some complications is defined as quasi-coherent sheaves on, uh, well, on standard variety uh, which are B times B equivalent, but uh, in my realizations it's the following. You have this action, you have GLN, so I'm, I have the moment map from T star GL N to B times B dual or plus. And uh, Steinberg is exactly a pre-image of the moment map here. So this is, the, uh, this is the reason why I'm interested in this situation and trying to translate it uh, to some other languages. Uh, so far, so good. Now, next up step in the construction is a quite classical thing by now, uh, so, uh, so again we have X acted on by some algebraic group G, then there's a what's called linear causal duality. Uh, due to Mirkovich and Rish. Uh, it says the following, it's a theorem. Uh, so on one hand, you can consider DG modules uh, over this group G, I, I'll be quite precise, over uh, symmetric algebra of T X of minus two, uh, and this derived category is equivalent to uh, just, well, DG modules, again, G equivalent, uh, over, well, the RAM DG algebra, uh, uh, only differential is zero, over forms on X, uh, negatively graded. So this is exterior algebra of T star X placed in degree one. 
with zero differential. So this is linear causal duality. And uh, uh, one remark is that, so I want to do something like this, and I, I hope in the end I'll have time to explain why I'm interested in this. But uh, remark is, so neither uh, left-hand side or right-hand side nor right-hand side uh, is like uh, in uh, Hamiltonian reduction. So, and the reason is that uh, now the uh, base is derived, but the, the group is still non-derived. And actually what, uh, uh, so the remedy, Uh, make sense of of uh, DG modules over the same uh, DG algebra, but equivalent with respect to uh, the group G with a different sheaf of functions. The, the sheaf of functions will be also differential forms on G, again with negative. Uh, Uh, and then that's that's what we do, and that's what what uh, corrects this this problem. Uh, let me give sketch of the construction so to define this category, and it it will turn out that this category indeed is equivalent to this uh, uh, Hamiltonian reduction category in either of its realizations. So. Recall that uh, this situation of a group acting on a, uh, a manifold, oh, well, an algebraic variety or a, on basically anything leads to, so G acting on X produces a, a simplicial uh, scheme. Uh, uh, so it starts from X, and then goes G cross X. So algebraic topologies like this, but since recently algebraic geometries like, like this as well. Uh, and uh, so equivalent data is basically the collection of data on each of these pieces. So I will not uh, go into deep details, but at least I'll say that that you can so uh, consider DG modules over uh, again these differential forms on each of these pieces. So this will be my category. Let me call it I don't know C uh, sub n. So this C sub n is an object uh, in uh, the category of DG categories. Uh, so considered, say, as a model category. As a quasi category, it doesn't matter. So now uh, this model category or higher category theory business uh, tells us what to do. So you define uh, these equivalent, D module, uh, equivalent modules of uh, 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 this algebra. As just the limit of this CN. So it's inverse limit. Uh, and since we are talking about uh, homotopy story, it's, it's homotopy limit. It's a, and this is the definition. Uh, and remark is that we have a very concrete realization of this. So we have a very concrete 
really different. Generalizing a recent paper by Block uh, hosting and wait. Uh, so it turns out that they uh, just didn't work hard enough. They did only the case of such pictures with a finite group G, but that's because they were lazy. Uh, very good. Now I can state the uh, theorem. And then I'll explain my interest. I hope I'll have five minutes for that. Uh, so the, the theorem by Orsten and me saying that in this situation when G acts on X, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so this derived category of DG modules over omega X equivalent respect to omega G defined as over there is equivalent to, uh, well, to this quasi-coherent sheaves on Hamiltonian reduction, which are G equivalent. And again, of course, there's derived category here. And I am uh, hiding under the carpet some finiteness conditions which I need here for causal duality to work. Uh, okay, so now in the remaining uh, five minutes, which is great, uh, uh, I'll talk about my interest. So the case of uh, a fine Hickey category. So uh, first of all, this affine Hickey category, which is equivalent quasi coherent sheaves uh, uh, yeah, on, st on standard variety, uh, is monoidal. Uh, so there's a convolution product and uh, uh, its K group is, uh, well, especially if you add equivalence with respect to dilations, uh, is equivalent to just the usual affine Hickey algebra. Uh. So in here, there are some very important uh, classes TI, which satisfy braid relations. Now, uh, Simon Rish and Bezrukavnikov defined categorification of this. So in here, in the affine Hecke category, there are special objects Ti uh, which satisfy braid relations uh, up to isomorphism, of course, uh, for convolution product. And uh, this result turned out to be quite tricky. So there was original calculation of Risch in his thesis, I think, which was case by case. I mean, uh, sorry, this, I, I am talking about GLN, but you could plug in any reductive group. And then uh, there's uh, another proof by Bezrukavnikov and Romanian and Risch and uh, Mirkovich, which basically reduction to characteristic P. So it's, it's uh, already heavy duty algebraic geometry machinery. And uh, my question was, how come such a, a beautiful fact can be proved by some methods, you know? Uh, and uh, my impression was that uh, the fact should follow from one precise uh, algebraic ge geometry fact uh, and then application it somewhere. And that's uh, what, what is true. 
so here is the algebraic geometry theorem. It's due to uh, Baranowski with a, a, a very clever but unwritten explanation by uh, Efimov. So theorem, Baranowski. So I have to say that probably specialists in uh, Hodge theory know already how to prove it and you since Deligne, Dubois, and other people. So the, the theorem is like this. So it's ba basically it answers the following question. So given uh, an algebraic variety with a divisor with normal crossings, we have uh, logarithmic differential forms. Uh, suppose your divisor is not normal crossings. Do we have a canonical notion of differential forms with logarithmic singularities. And the answer is yes, and the picture is like this. So we have x with some, say, divisor d, which is probably not normal crossings, and uh, x might be singular, but all singularities sit inside d. And then there's a desingularization, x tilde, and inside there's a, uh, yeah, so, D tilde, say. So this is identity. So it's, it's a typical desingularization situation. Uh, and this is projective, and this is smooth, and this is with, with simple normal crossings. Uh, so then it turns out that the following thing can be done. You, you consider differential forms, like I did, say with negative grading, so no differential, uh, on X tilde. Uh, logarithmic with respect to d tilde. And let's call this map M for some reason. And let's uh, uh, take direct push forward of this to x. Then uh, the theorem says that this guy does not depend up to quasi-isomorphism. on the choice of x tilde, d tilde, of desingularization. So, so this direct image is uh, logarithmic differential forms on x with respect to uh, some non-normal crossings divisor d. And up to quasi-isomorphism is defined. But where? It should live in this equivariant derived category. So as, as an equivariant omega x module. So uh, now, uh, just to finish, if you apply this theorem in the presence of this machinery of equivalent DG modules over differential forms, so apply this machinery, to the following. So I have GLN, uh, inside I have, let me call it XW, and this is, uh, uh, that's what is called large Schubert variety. And now uh, this XW has a bunch of desingularizations, which are called both Samuelson variety. And they depend on uh, decomposition of your W into uh, shortest possible product of simple reflections. Uh, so let me again denote it by M, this map. Uh, now, it turns out that the preimage of uh, the singular part, the possibly singular part of this large Schubert, Schubert variety here is uh, well, call it, say, uh, I don't know, Z. <laughs> so Z is normal cross, simple normal crossings divisor. So, uh, so it turns out that uh, this uh, result of Bezrukarnikov and Risch in the presence of this causal duality machinery is equivalent to the statement that uh, push forward of differential forms on this uh, uh, this singularization, log z, 
uh, along M depends on W, but not on uh, this decomposition, or on the choice of reduced expression. And this uh, contains uh, braid relations as they are. So you don't need any uh, reduction to characteristic P or anything. And it turns out that, that indeed this operation is the incarnation of this convolution product on this language. Okay, so let me stop. Uh, thank you very much for attention. This is the, the main question. Uh, I can say one word. So uh, imagine uh, two Kazool dual sides. And both of them can be uh, like classical and quantum. So one Kazool dual side is classically sheaves on cotangent bundle in the quantum sense, D modules. Uh, the other side uh, classically is modules over differential forms. Uh, quantized, you add the RAM differential. So these pi pictures match, and they both of them have the same problem. So first of all, on the even side, you can take singular support. And on the odd side, you can, can kind of forget differential. Uh, on the even side, uh, when you have a divisor with normal crossings and open embedding of the complement, uh, singular support of the, of the uh, sh uh, like, uh, sheaf of push forward uh, is very nice and is easy to calculate. Uh, and this is the uh, causal dual thing to, to these uh, logarithmic differential forms. So logarithmic differential forms is singular support of push forward from the open part. Uh, now, uh, this kind of story needs a relation between push forward and taking singular support. Uh, once on the even side and once on the odd side. On the even side, there is Dillon theorem which says that cohomology of this open complement uh, is defined by log the log Dram. So it doesn't depend on the embedding because we're talking about the open part. So we, we could do it here or we could do it here. It doesn't matter. So if you do it with the presence of Dram differential, the statement is in a way tautological in the presence of Dillon theorem. But the question is how to define, uh, how to forget the RAM differential. On the other side, if you do it for D modules, again, you'll be doing D module push forward and you can do it like this or like this. And uh, certainly, I mean, it's the same. So, so this D module statement is trivial, but then you need to uh, compare push forward and uh, taking single support. Uh, the point is that these things do not commute in general, but they commute for mixed Hodge D modules. So if you believe in this black box of mixed Hodge D modules, then everything is fine. But for this, you need you know, one handshake person who you know, gives his tooth for this machinery to work. And uh, most of us don't have such person. So I think that much less is needed that this whole Hodge demodule machinery is not needed. Uh, and this statement can be and is proved directly by you know, choosing blow ups and, and so on, and then comparing two desingularizations by like top desingularization above. That's what Baranowski does.